This is a quick video just to talk about high-speed illumination switching, and this is particularly using our multi-expose out triggering function on the Prime and the smart streaming function on the Prime as well. So before we get to that, let's look at the camera. We have a 4.2 megapixel SCMOS sensor, which gives us the low read noise, the high QE, the big sensor, and again inside that we have these nice features, the Prime Enhance, the Locate, the ROI being done uh, computationally inside the camera on FPGA for your convenience. And again, we have the mounting points and C mounts on the camera, really easy to connect to. High speed PCI Express, you wanna do 100 frames a second or faster with regions, that's what you're gonna use. If you wanna use USB 3, you can do. If you wanna go faster than 30 frames a second, you don't need to have a faster USB, you just plug in the PCI Express card. Cooling options, we say minus 10 here, I think it's getting to minus 15 actually. Um, in air, edge is the market leading calling. We have selectable fan speeds and we can go kind of make the fan quieter or move it between different points, maybe you find an oscillation. Um, we actually have an incredibly quiet fan. We're measuring much, much lower than our competitors for vibrations. If you really don't want any vibrations, we have the leading calling for liquid calling. Again, on the same camera, no different part numbers, straight in there. Maybe one day you need it, maybe you look at it doing it later on, it's up to you. And again, we have the advanced triggering, the effective global shutter, and the expose outlines, which we're gonna show you now, what we call the multi-trigger uh, expose out. So, if you're gonna do multi-channel imaging, you can control an illumination device like an LED or automated microscope, or you're gonna control a laser, uh, laser light source or something like that. You can control that via USB or in the old days, RS-232 comms. Or we can try and use it with triggering devices. And what we're gonna try and show you today is a little bit of control illumination via our multi-trigger out. Your alternative to this as well would be to try and use the illumination of multi-trigger out and smart streaming. And what this allows you to do is, you know, instead of just triggering to move between different LEDs, we're gonna go uh, 10 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds, 10 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds, and actually allow you to change the exposure time between those uh, without slowing the system down at all. So all of these functions, this multi-trigger out and the smart streaming are exclusive to the Photometrics Prime. It's our technology, it's all in there. So, what are we looking at again? The, we're gonna show you a video now. We're gonna go through how to set up this effective global shutter and how to control multi-trigger out and how to select and use smart streaming. Multi-trigger out allows the user to trigger up to four illumination sources without the need for any additional hardware. Smart streaming allows users to increase the speed when using different exposure times to max, uh, maximize the acquisition speed. We do this in a couple of ways. The first thing is you're gonna minimize the cycle time. So if you had 250 millisecond exposure times, it's gonna take you longer than doing a 50 millisecond and a 10 millisecond. The other thing you're gonna to need to think about is that you're gonna eliminate changing parameters. Every time you change an exposure time to the camera, you're effectively uploading a script saying, change your job. And what smart streaming does is it works by actually loading the job into the camera before the experiment starts. So it knows on trigger one, I'm gonna do 50 milliseconds. On trigger two, I'm gonna do 10 milliseconds. So at the end of this, what we'll do is show you a table for some of the results of what we found. But our aim here is really to, to show you how to set up this multi-trigger out and the smart streaming and to show you how much faster it is than a USB device. Okay, let's have a look at and setting this up inside MicroManager. Right, so we're running live. You can see now we have 200 millisecond exposure time and we have an image up of one channel. Now, normally inside MicroManager, we would actually go to the multi-dimensional acquisition and we'd set up a couple of channels here. Normally that's gonna run and taking images really fastest I've seen is kind of, you know, a couple of seconds or, you know, two images a second or something. Um, but now if we come in here, we're gonna go first of all, we're gonna turn on all rows. That's our global shutter mode. And then we're gonna come down and we're gonna set up the multi-trigger out. We're gonna have two triggers out. The minute I do this, you can see me flicking between the two channels automatically. Just two BNC connectors going onto the back of an LED light source at the moment going red, green, red, green. If I reduce it and go live, do you know what? Micromanager is not quite as good at, at keeping up on showing you the live display. It's a pretty hard job, right? But let's acquire 100 images. Okay, 100 images at 20 milliseconds. Okay, and you can see here when I play through, you can kind of go red, green, red, green, red, green. By the end of it, it takes about three seconds and I start at about 0.2, so three seconds, or I'm running about 33 frames a second, red, green, red, green. 
and it's really fast, don't have to think about it. Okay, so really good to go high speed triggering for that. Okay, let's try it again. Maybe let's have a look at say 50 milliseconds now. Let's go, uh, I'll go up here and we'll just type in 50. And we'll kind of a look here and see how much it drops. So we have 33 frames a second or 20 milliseconds, that's pretty good. Again, you know, two frames a second is pretty good for a USB device. Um, so now let's control it with 50 millisecond exposure time. Again, it's just capturing them, it's captured them, it's writing them into the buffer and everything else at the moment. So now when we look at this, let's kind of take it through. We have the red green going through sequentially. It's a little bit slower, obviously 50 milliseconds, but overall, how long did it take us? Well, it took us about three, uh, what's that, six seconds. So 100 images in six seconds, you're running about 16.7 frames a second. But what we're gonna do now is look, I'll set up Smart streaming will go 50 milliseconds and 10 milliseconds. Now this is because one of the channels I think is I think needs 50 milliseconds and the other one needs 10. So now I should go a lot faster because I have a shorter cycle time for the overall images. That's my shorter cycle time. If I was using USB, I'd have to stop and upload a different parameter for the exposure time. But now I'm running, I'm getting about 100 frames in four seconds. So now I'm running at the 25 frames a second. So with multi-trigger out, you can get the images to go as fast as possible. And with smart streaming, you can use different exposure times with that fast as possible triggering. So it's really rather neat. Let's have a look at the results. Let's have a look at the results. The first thing is, let's look at the USB control. We used the Q-Imaging WLS, and we were using Micromanager to move between channels to capture the images. When we did this on a very simple test, take 100 images, when we did one channel 50, one channel 50, 61 seconds to do that, it took 1.7 frames per second, so it was pretty slow. It's not bad for documentation or making a job easier, that's quite nice, it's a lot easier than moving the cubes yourself, but it's not fast. If we did the same thing, and in this case, we changed the 50 milliseconds and then the next channel's 10, so 50, 10, 50, 10, again using a USB controller, when we're doing this, we can really see the effect of the upload of the script. When you change exposure times, cameras need to upload a script and that has a little bit of a delay to it. And you can see it took four seconds more to take my 100 images. I actually dropped by 0.1 frames a second to do that. Now, Moving to multi-trigger, same experiment, 50 milliseconds and 50 milliseconds, two channels, 50, 50, 50, 50, every time I get a trigger, I change between my illumination sources. Now I jump forward, look at that, I've got six seconds. Six seconds to take 100 images, I'm at 16.7 frames a second, I'm 10 times faster. Multi-trigger out on the Photometrics Prime camera allows you to just connect BNC straight to the illumination source and go 10 times faster. Now, if you had a difference between you know, intensities of those two channels and you could get away with it, you could drop one of the exposures to 10. So now you're going 50, 10, 50, 10. You're triggering it and you're using smart streaming. And the smart streaming is awesome because now we jump from 16.7 to 25 frames a second. So we can go even faster. So thinking about this, our multi-trigger out, just simply connecting the cables for our BNC from the trigger cable that's inside the Photometrics Prime box will get you to go 10 times faster than using a USB device. If you want to use multi-trigger plus smart streaming, you're going to be 18 times faster than USB. So any of you guys want to do fast kind of multi-channel imaging or ratioing, this really is the solution for you. Even if you were controlling things with triggers at the moment, and you're getting some kind of use out of that at the moment because you've got a triggering device. Maybe you're using national instruments or something like that to do the signal. Signal splitting, the smart streaming function of this allows you to go one and a half times faster with the exposure times that we've noted than triggers alone would do. Now, it is important with smart streaming that we remember it's a function of the difference between the longest and shortest exposure times. You're not going to see that much of an increase, this one and a half times faster increase, if you went from 49 to 50 milliseconds. That's too much of a short gap. We, we're not really increasing it. However, you'll see a lot greater increase in this kind of smart streaming effect if you were going from a 10 millisecond to 100 milliseconds. But overall, smart streaming is faster. If you have different exposure times and you can use it, why don't you go faster by reducing cycle time and not having any kind of loading of scripts up to the camera? The Photometrics Prime 
really is the best camera in the CMOS range out there to be doing this multi-trigger high-speed imaging by moving illumination sources around. Okay, hope that all makes sense, um, and we hope you enjoy the video. Thank you.